last week, and I want y'all to dream with me, and I want y'all to really, really get this. I took a trip last week, and literally, I was on a 7,000-acre ranch that somebody owned. Somebody say 7,000. 7,000. Over 18 miles of property. Lakes everywhere. Houses on all this property. And when God invited me there, and he didn't invite me there until, <laughs> Pastor T, right? The day before, on Saturday. Pastor T mentioned about unexpected surprises. And God put on my heart to take this trip. And then our team got it together, got me off 7,000 acres. I'm on 7,000 acres, and I'm looking around. I'm like, what is this? And then I was talking to Brother Beecher, who does an amazing job leading our armor bearers. Come on, give Brother Beecher a shout out. I, I had tears in my eyes. This stuff was never supposed to be about learning a bunch of Bible stuff. It's supposed to understand that the gospel is the good news that Jesus has come to put us back in the original state that Adam was in. And in Genesis chapter 126, put it up. It's our foundation scripture. You need to get this, and you got to start acting like this. And sometimes you got to act like it until you become it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, don't have to, you don't have to have experienced it yet to be it. Because God make you be it before you see it. Come on, y'all need to say something in here now. God will make you be it before you see it. That's why he tells you, you got to believe it's possible. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking, 7,000 acres, I caught some bass. I caught a three and a half pound bass, fish. That morning we got up, I, I took the dominion scripture. Here we go. Let's all read it. And God said, ready, go, read. And God said, stop there. We're just going to hit those three letters. One, two, three. And God said. One, two, three. How many of y'all know when God's talking, everybody needs to be quiet? Yes. And when God's talking, he don't care about your Mickey Mouse belief. Yes. He's going to tell you what the truth is. Yes. And he's going to tell you what the truth is. And the more you know what the truth is, the more you are going to be able to walk and see the transformation in your life. Because before behavior changes, truth has to be revealed. Yes. Right. Wow. Amen. And here's, here's what you've been created to do before Adam jacked it up. And now Jesus got us back to it. And God said, let us make man in our image. First thing we're going to see what God made and what he called a man. Let us make man in our image. So now God, he's already created everything else, but he decided with us, little Sim. He decided with us, I'm putting me, my kind of stuff in them. I'm putting the kind of stuff in them that I'm made of. And you need to always know whatever you came out of, you got to stay attached to in order for you to continue to grow. A tree has to stay attached to the soil. Fish have to stay in water. And in order for you to truly function at the highest level of your existence possible, you got to stay attached to your creator. You got to stay attached. God is not your resource. He's your source. If you got a business, he'll send you customers. If you cause your business to solve problems for customers. If you have problems, God will tell you, I'm the source of the answer to your problem. So there's a silver Chrysler town and country van that's running on the back lot behind the building. <laughs> this is like the second time in like a month. <laughs> this word so good, people jumping out cars, not turning it off. To get in here and hear this word. So I got one question. Why are you so late? Here's another question. I got it right here. I, I'm handing these out. Because if I knew about this, what God's doing in here, I start, I hand them out. And this is what you got to do. This ain't, no, this, I'm going to use some, maybe not the best English, but it'll get your attention. This ain't a sorority or fraternity. There's no secret shakes in here. 
You have to tell people about the good news, and you tell people the good news. It doesn't matter whether you're having a bad day, because if you stay with the gospel and you stay with Jesus, that bad day is going to work out for your good. Even if you had bad stuff that happened to you before you got saved, he's going to work it out for your good. He's going to work it out for your good. He's going to do what? He's going to work it out for your good. I need real quick, I need like two people to come get in these front rows. I don't like having any more empty seats. So I'm going to just, in real time, somebody, I need two people out the back. Come on. All the way out the back. Somebody be bold. Be quick. Come on. Come on, bro. brother. Got the white suit. I got two. Y'all good. Come on. Y'all two. Come on. Come on. I'm going to stand him up. Let y'all see that white suit. <laughs> yeah, that's that. You, yeah, he, there he is right there. Show him. Show him right there. Shout him right. Let him see it. Let him see it. Hold on. Let him see it. Brother, show him. Let him see how you put that purple together. Look how you put that purple together. <laughs> Stop keeping this to yourself. This life changed. I can't tell you I'm starting to see so many people. I went to the post office. The lady told me, you keep doing what you're doing. She said, I love how. Here's what the lady told me at the post office. She said, I've been watching online, and I sure look like it. You got a lot of men in that church. <laughs> That's what she told me. <laughs> That's what she told me. <laughs> That's what she told me. I'm just telling the brothers. That's what she told me. She said, you got a lot of men. And here's what else she said. I'm so, I so appreciate you come down and talk to people. It don't mean I'm better than anybody. I just do it the way he calls me to flow. Everybody got me? And God said, let us, man, this is what you got to listen to. Stop listening to all that YouTube foolishness. You find out what God originally said before this thing got jacked up. Because everybody else, if they off and don't know the truth, they're going to tell you something about something that's going to change the next generation. But when God speaks, he speaks that are working every generation. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So image has to do with the stuff God is. God is a spirit and so are you. God is a spirit and so are, so are you. God is a spirit and so are you. God is a spirit and so are you. You may say then, why have all these challenges? Because it is your soul your mind, your will, and your emotions that cause the problems. But when you get born again, you don't become a fixed up person. You become a new creation. The nature changes. And now you have a new, your new creation. Now your soul has to be taught that. Because when you get saved, your soul is not saved. Come on, somebody. Your soul is not saved even though your spirit is. Your spirit is out. What's the best way? How can I describe this? If all of these, Peter, if all of these, if all of you all were slaves, if you were all slaves, if you were all slaves, and then somebody came paid to get you free and let you go. Now, back in the days when they had slaves, and particularly in the book of Deut Deuteronomy, if a slave once set free, did not want to go free, wanted to stay with the master, they had to put a hole in their ear. Something similar to an earring. To let everybody know that they were set free, but they chose to stay as slaves. And do you know you could be set free, but continue to choose to stay a slave? You could, the prison door could be open, and you can choose not to walk out. Because of your soul and your flesh. The gospel is the father sent his son, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, to die in your stead and to pay the penalty for the original sin that Adam put on every one of us. Because of what Adam did, every one of us were born sinners. Let's talk for a second. I know you got your degree. I know you got your house and I know you live in all the other places you want to live in. But you were born a sinner. And I know that baby you got that's in the nursery. You put that Johnson powder on that baby. <laughs> you put the good clothes on that baby. You buy all the new stuff for that baby. But how many of y'all know that baby was born a what? Sinner. Anybody had your child that when they were younger just would slap you? Anybody? <laughs> Don't give me half elbows. Give me raise them up. Raise them up. How many of y'all know that's a sinner? That's a sinner right there. <laughs> 
how you gonna slap your mama? Right. <laughs> how about this? Me and my brother be fighting all the time. Where do you think that come from? My parents never set us down and say, this is how you fight. You a sinner. Why am I saying that? Because if all of us don't recognize that we're sinners and we need a savior, you don't run to get on the ark. You think you're good. But the rain coming. And only those who are on the ark are the ones that realize they need a savior. So some of us in this season, God is attempting to show you, you are not all that. What he wants you to know is, I've been doing all that through you. But you think it was your education. You think it was how smart you were. I just got one question for you. Who gave you the brain? I got one question for you. How much has God done for you this week that you haven't said thank you? Can we all just get up and say thank you real quick, real quick, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, 11 o'clock, get up, get up. I say get up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing like gratitude. There's nothing like gratitude. Let's just take a moment. I want you to start thinking of some things to thank him about this week. Right now. Some of us have experienced healing. Think about all the stuff you worry about, he takes care of all the time. Has he healed a relationship this week? Has he taken care of things for you this week? Did he wake you up this week? Can somebody say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's just have a praise break. Thank you. Thank you for our mothers. Thank you for Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the more you do this with God, the more you're going to do this with people. Tell people thank you. Even if they work for you, tell them thank you. Or you work for them, tell them thank you. Something stabilizes humanity when there's an atmosphere of gratefulness. Think about the Think about it. Think about the youngsters laying, thinking about, thinking about all that thinking you were doing about choosing those schools. Think about all of that, right? And look how God brought it in right where it's supposed to be, right? Right where it's supposed to be. Right tears, right where it's supposed to be. Yeah, all my singles, stop worrying about spou- a spouse. You already got a spouse. His name is Jesus. And if you learn, if you and I learn to be a good spouse to Jesus, you'll be a great spouse for somebody else. Amen. Give somebody a high five. You may be seated. <laughs> Let us make man in our image after our likeness so now we can act like God. And here we go. I made you in my image. I put inside of you what I'm like. Now... Go take dominion. Why is he telling you to take dominion? Because he told you you already got the stuff to dominate. He said, why are you telling you to take dominion? And you got to tell this to your babies. I need you reading the word and prophesying over these babies while they're in the crib or while they're in your belly. You got to start speaking the word of God over these children because when they're in your womb, they can hear you. You start calling those things that be not as though they were. You start saying stuff like they will live out their destiny. They will live out their purpose. They will live out their potential. They're going to be at the right place at the right time. You just start saying it. 
You got to allow yourself to dominate your word, your world with your words. Dominate your world with your words. Dominate your world with your words. Dominate your world with your words. That's how God did it. There was confusion, darkness, the earth was now formed, God starts talking. And whose image are you made in? So if God changes things by talking, we're supposed to be changing things by talking. And whatever we're dealing with right now is what we've been talking about. And I'm not necessarily talking about what your lips open. I'm talking about the conversation you have in here. That you allow some thought in here, somebody told you you're stupid, and you let yourself say that. I remember I was on a golf course with somebody, and they hit an errant ball, and they yelled out, you stupid. Who else we saw doing that as a professional? Tiger. Don't you ever think that won't impact a person. Now, some of men will look at it like, yeah, you see, he got it, yeah, yeah. But the whole time, he was saying that to himself. And it doesn't matter about this world how much you have. If you say things to yourself, eventually you're going to become that. <laughs> so you have to be very careful. And the number one thing God wants you to do is control your mouth. Because yes, death and life, death and life. If you got some death happening around you, and think of death as separation. That's all death, physical death is the spirit and the soul separated from the body. There could be divorce is death, separation. Y'all got it? Yeah. If there's death in your life, check out what you've been saying. Yeah. If your family has been separated from good relationships, check out. So one or two siblings been talking about another sibling to each right. other. Right. Death. Mm-hmm. Or something happens between you and your spouse, but nobody says anything. Or you start saying, well, he should know. Well, if he's not doing it, he don't know. And if you need to tell him a thousand times, tell him a thousand times. So he eventually will know. Why? Because you understand the power of your tongue. And here's here's the other thing I found out. And the Bible says, no man, and I'm talking about dominion, and I'm going back to how you dominate. And I'll show you a couple of people, three, three women, three mothers that dominated because they understand what I'm getting ready to tell you. The first thing you need to understand in the book of James, it says no man can tame the tongue. I'm going to tell you all again. It says no man can tame the tongue. How many of y'all know, Shelton, that God wasn't just telling us that y'all may not be able to control your tongue? He says no man can control the tongue. And he says we put a bit in a huge horse's mouth to control it. Then there's a small, he's using these metaphors so you can see how powerful and effective the direction of your life is going to go based on this little small member of your body that in in proportion to your body is very small. So he uses a horse that may weigh 100, 500 pounds to tell you that a bit in proportion to the horse's size causes it to be calm and do what you want it. Then he tells you about a rudder on a huge ship. In proportion to the size of the ship, I'm showing you that this small rudder turns that whole ship. And when you get older, you have to understand and have patience with faith. Faith and patience. Why? Because when you get older, your life is no longer a boat. It's a ship. And a ship turns when the rudder tells it turn, but it turns a little slower. That's why when you single, you want to learn, you want to dominate your single state because you're a boat. You can make changes because a boat can change. You turn the rudder on the boat, the boat, let's go. Yeah. Not when you start having children. Yes, sir. Not when you get married. Yes, sir. Now you can make changes. Now that ship is, you've already changed it. Now you've already been speaking, and, but you got to be able to see the movement of that ship because it's slow. Yeah. It don't look like it's moving. Yes, sir. That's why people start talking against what they want because they don't realize the boat, the ship is turning. It's just not turning fast to you. But if you just stay keeping that rudder where it's supposed to go, you eventually, it's going to get around. You're going to see the turn. And so you got to be praising God. You got to, why? You got to praise God. You got to praise God just when, if you see that ship just right here. Now it got to go all the way here. But if you start praising and thanking God, come on, Paul, 
Come on, Linda. If you start praising, sometimes you, God has already told you, your children are the seed of the righteous. They're going to reach their potential, but you don't see it. You see them look like they're getting worse. Y'all follow me? And then you start saying, oh, man. Then you start talking to them crazy because you, you think you could talk to them and get them right. You got you to gotta see. The first thing you got to know, your children are seed of the righteous. Don't matter how, does not matter, does not matter, does not matter what it looks like right now. Your children are the seed of the righteous. And if we just use agriculture, and Jesus used a lot of agricultural uh, parables because that was the environment he was living in during that time. Uh, how many of y'all know, and I've done this before, that something is happening with that seed below the surface? And that's what's happening. Every time you speak the word, every time you stay with it, regardless of what you see, if you just continue to speak the word. And what God will do is give you a word. Little Sim is headed to Michigan after going to France. Right? Now think about this. Not only did God speak to him because you had some choices. I think Georgia Tech or either Michigan, right? And f when you're young, you, sh you can struggle with that have tension about that. How did you finally make the decision? So for his visit to Michigan, he prayed that God would reveal which place that you're supposed to. What did you see? He said it was obvious. Can you get him my mic? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah like on Tell him how old you are. Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can y'all hear me? There, there we go. Um, yeah. Come on, stand and let him see you, little sim. Now, why am I saying this? You don't come to church for religion. Amen. You come to church to learn how to dominate in life, yes. the practical stuff. Right? You had different seasons of your life. A big concern with younger people, a big in high school, is what's cool? or whether to take a trade, and it feels so enormous. But the God who's bigger than all of it yeah. will direct your path if you will acknowledge him in all of your ways. Come on, little Sim. Um, so for those who didn't hear me, uh, before I went to Michigan, um, I prayed that God would reveal which place I should go to between Michigan and Georgia Tech. And during my trip, there was just too many signs that was like leading me towards that. Like, even, even the last day, the woman who recruited me, um, unfortunately, like, her husband had a stroke. Um, but she still came to our brunch just to show how much, like, she cared about us and the relationship we built, like, those couple mm. of days we were there. And um, I think even before I left, I asked her, like, does she have a church for me to go to? And she did. And, like, her just showing up, mm. that was, like, the last straw. Like, this is the place I should be. Um, wow. Yeah. So did you kind of feel more celebrated there than... The other school? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to talk down on this. No, you're not talking down on this? Yeah. No, because I, I want to make I am doing my research in France with them, too. So. Correct, yeah. 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 So one of the things we can pick up from this is go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Y'all yeah. right. got it? Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Thank you, little Sim. Appreciate it. Come on, let's give him a hand. And I really could get the mic to a lot of our youngsters and just have them come up here and talk about their experiences. Yeah. This life, he came to give us life yeah. and life more abundantly. Yeah. He came to give us what? Life. Not religion. Not having a bunch of scriptures in your head. Yeah. He gave to give us some to dominate in life. I'm on this 7,000 acres and I'm looking at this. I'm saying, man, my vision too small. Like, I was, I, I'm just sitting there meditating. I got, I'm asking all kinds of questions. Yeah. Like 7,000 acres? Yeah. I mean, it's like Dallas for those that are far and over. <laughs> tell, tell the millennials, Generation Z, about Dallas. <laughs> 7,000. Like, we didn't catch fish on one lake. No problem. They took us to another one. Yeah. And we caught fish. Now... If he allow your under-shepherd to see, 
and stretch me. My job is to stretch you. Not to get a bunch of religion, but to dominate every area of your life. We're in this series called A Firm Foundation. And I got three mothers that really catch my attention with this when it comes down to dominating. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So when I was out that morning at, in that lake, I prayed, fish, come to my hook. <laughs> now, in Jesus' name. That's what the, the, don't I say that? The, I'm going with the word. You see that? I know some of y'all right now. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't care what I don't, I don't know. I don't know about you and all that. I know about me. It, here's what it said. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Is, isn't that what it said? Yes. All right. All right. Ever got it? And over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. I call that fish into my pole. In the morning, we all six o'clock in the morning, didn't catch nothing. But I was called it. And I was getting ready to go to sleep because we had some meetings that afternoon. But another pastor, he was going fishing. I didn't feel like going fishing. I just went out there because he was going. And how many of y'all know the Spirit had me go out there even though my soul and flesh was tired because I had already spoken, I'm going to catch fish. And when you speak something, it doesn't matter if it don't happen right away. And how many of y'all know when I went out with that pastor, how about this one? This pastor gave me three things that I would have had to pay over 100 grand just because there are 10, 11 pastors on this retreat. All of them went to sleep. I said, I ain't sleeping on this. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? That pastor gave me three things I had to pay at least 100 to 200 grand for, for free. Because I spent time with them. And we went out there and caught fish. I caught a three and a half pound bass. He said, he say, take them back to you can't tame the tongue. The goal is not to tame the tongue. The goal is to make sure you're meditating on the right stuff. Because whatever's in here is going to come out the tongue. People try to control the tongue. You got to control the well and what's in the well. You got to make sure you're not having doubt and unbelief in here because the mouth is, has a law to it. Whatever's in here, you're not going to be able to stop it from coming out here. It's going to be like vomit. It's coming out. So you get people say, you know, I've just got to watch my mouth. No, 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 no. You got to watch what you meditate on. That's why the psalmist said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You got to watch what you let, let and stay here. Yeah. I had to watch this. Sometimes I'd be in one-on-one. How many of y'all know Pastor Sim chest still hurting from last week? <laughs> Go look at the video if y'all know what I'm talking about. It, it's, it's, he, he did a great job, but his chest still hurting a little bit. I got him, Brother B. Moore, B. Moore back there. He said, yeah, yeah, you got it. I'd go one-on-one, -on -one and the receivers in one-on-one -on -one would just run past me. And you can have a tendency to get your head down. I just kept talking to myself. We got the next one. We got the next one. We got the next one. See, you got to control this. You can't let it. There's, there's an adversary. There's an adversary out here. But you've already been put over him. He's a prince. You're a king. I'm going to say it again. He's a what? A prince. You a king. Because you are part of the king of kings. And the what? Lord of lords. Three women taught me something. Three mothers. First one was Sarah. Sarah was old. She in her, she in her boot. Old. Nothing working. And God has some business he wants to do. So he comes to her, Pastor T, and he said, tell her husband, your wife will have a baby. And she was not in ear, she wasn't in eye shot of the Lord in Abraham's conversation. She was hiding in, in the cut. 
and she heard she gonna have a baby, she started laughing. <laughs> and if you really start walking by faith, when God starts showing you and telling you what he has for you, what he wants to do for you, what he wants to do through you, you're going to start laughing. Because you're going to think, ha, 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 walk on the football team my Southern University, huh? Ha, 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 What that dude doing? What he trying to do? That's one of my teammates. That's how he talk. What are you trying to do? Come out here play football. We've been practicing five weeks to a day. What do you come out here? Ha, ha, ha. Don't you let somebody, somebody else's doubt and laughter keep you from your destiny. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The world waits till they see it. Believers conceive it because they believe it. Y'all better write that one down. Come on, 11 o'clock. You better write that one down. So Sarah, he told her, you're going to have a baby. Sarah started taking natural assessment. Man, my dude old. Man, it, it ain't working like it used to. There was no Viagra back then. <laughs> Nothing working. But when God starts talking, when God starts talking, it has nothing to do with what's not working. Because whatever he says, he going to make it work. So here's the statement. Put it up there. Here's my first statement I want you to remember. This is what I learned from Mother Sarah. Is, is there anything too hard for God? That's in the context. That's in the text. Because she was talking about everything she believed couldn't make it work. And the Lord asked her and him, is there anything too hard for God? I haven't heard anybody say no yet. I'm going to ask you all a question again. Should I put a question mark behind it? <laughs> is there anything too hard for God. No. Who got it better than us? No. You mean you can be old and have a baby? Who got it better than us? Nobody. Who was the second one? A lady named Hannah. First Samuel chapter 1. Couldn't have a baby. Her husband had two wives. And the wife, one of the wives was just pumping out babies. But Hannah couldn't have any. And I want you to know something, by the way. All these things are in the purpose and plan of God. It wasn't that he didn't want them to have children. He had purpose for their children. So Hannah now does not have children. And the lady that can have them, the other wife, she teasing her. She's spitting out babies and just, look at, look at Hannah. <laughs> I don't think they took pictures back then, but <laughs> she got her babies. Look at Hannah. And I mean, Hannah just was fretting. And then her husband speaks up. He see her because he goes to worship. He was a man of worship. He took him to worship. And he noticed when he and the two wives were going, Hannah was sad. And he looked at it and he said, why, why, why are you so sad? Am I as good to you than ten sons? Because he knew she must have been sad because of not having children. So here's what her pompous husband says. Not good English. I'll use good English. Am I not good to you better than ten sons? This arrogant joker. You ain't all that. This lady want to birth something. So she's crying and weeping. And what I learned from Hannah is petition prayer. And that's when you got something that a request that you're going to give to somebody else on behalf of you. She had petition prayer. She went to God when they went to worship in the temple. She prayed. And some people say, well, you can't pray without using words. 
uh, without sound or without using words. No, it said that lady, you couldn't hear any voice. You just saw her lips moving. She was praying in her heart, the Bible says. But her lips were moving, so the priest thought she was drunk. She was petitioning God, asking God for her. And here's what she told him. She said, God, if you give me a son, I'm going to give him back to you. She birthed Samuel. With what she didn't know, and most people don't know, God's plans for you is within the story of his plan. Hannah was withheld from having a baby because God was getting ready to fire Eli's two boys, who was the high priest at the time. She didn't know she was a part of a plot that God needed her to be so desperate. Oh, oh, man. Somebody's put, God has put somebody around you to provoke you. Because it says, the scripture says she started fretting and just being so upset when that other wife just kept doing that to her, talking to her crazy. All God was doing was get some passion out that woman. So when she came to pray, how many of y'all know she was going to be really praying? Yeah. And by the way, it helps in your prayers if all three parts of you are there. Yeah. You got your body and your soul and your spirit all engaged in prayer. It's called effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that will avail much. Some of your prayers are not answered because you ain't got no passion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You could take it or leave it. How many of y'all know homegirl vowed? She went straight to God, Linda, and she said, if you give me a son, I, I vow. I'll give him to you. God said, bet, that's all I needed because your son going to replace these two sinning jokers. That's not like their dad, Eli. I got to fire them, but I withheld you from having a child so I can get a woman so desperate that she was going to give a child to me if I would give her a child. So I had to put a woman next to her to bother her. Boy, God is so good, man. So Stop trying to pray out of your life those that God is using to provoke you, to drive you to Him. Some of y'all, you just, you're not paying attention. He's a master chess player. Nothing happens. He moving chess. Petition prayer. That's my next one. Put that up there. What did we learn from Sarah? Is there anything too hard for God? And you say? No. Petition prayer. Stop going to everybody else. How many of y'all know she couldn't go? And, and when her husband saw she kept fretting about a child, he said, am I God? <laughs> she went to God. And she got that boy. She kept her, kept her word, dedicate that boy. How many of y'all know? Homegirl end up having a, a lot more children. Yeah. I want to read something to you guys. Somebody say secret sauce. Secret sauce. Something very interesting about the supernatural experiences that happen in these women's lives. The next one is Mary. The next one is Mary. What I learned from Mary is to be it done according to thy word. In other words, what Mary taught us was, if you say it, I'm going to believe it. Even if I don't know how it's going to happen, I'm going to just believe what you say. And that's what God needs. He needs you and I to believe what he says, even if we don't understand it, even if it don't. That's what the Holy Spirit, Gabriel said, say, highly favored woman of God, you're going to have a baby. How is it going to happen? The Holy Ghost is going to come on you. Now, you know how some of y'all would be. Okay. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Okay. And then she said, well, how can this be? Then he told her, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Then you'll be with child. Put up the next one. Be it done to me. I'm sorry. 
That's it. For with God, nothing is impossible. Everybody, everybody read that. For with God, God, nothing is impossible. So you mean your situation different? Is your situation as big or bigger than a, a virgin having a baby? Right. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Secret sauce, Peter. After each of them experience a supernatural, wake the person up next to you <laughs> before I get them. He said, you make sure you give them the secret sauce. He says, because I want to do supernatural things in their lives. But they got to trust me to do it. They got to give me glory. Listen to Hannah's response after she has to her petition answered. It's found in chapter 2. And I'm going to read all of it. Because you need to hear it. This is the secret sauce. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoice in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth, there it is again, my mouth, is enlarged over my enemies. Because rejoice in thy salvation. To her having a child, it was salvation. Being delivered of not having children. So now she's saying a prayer to extol God, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly, and let not arrogancy, arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. This girl is getting deep with this prayer after the prayer has been answered. The bowls of the mighty men are broken. And they that, that stumble are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry cease, so that the barren have borne seven. Y'all know she's digging. Y'all know she's talking to that other lady who been teasing her. The barren has borne seven, and she that has many children is wax feeble. Don't ever judge a story in the middle of it. The Lord kill and make alive. He bring down to the grave and bring up. The Lord make poor and make rich. He bring low and lift up. He raise up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. What is, he, what is she doing? She's praising and giving glory and acknowledgement to the Lord. And you have to do the same thing in your life on a daily basis. You have to praise him when he's doing things. He said, you read them, you make sure you read in their ears. He said, you wake them up. Because you, God wants to do mighty things in your life. He wants to do supernatural things in your life. But you got to praise him afterwards. You got to have something inside of you that say praise the Lord. You got to have something inside of you say thank you, Lord. In other words, he's done it for you. But how many say thank you? He's, uh, he's healed you. How many have said thank you? That's what this lady is doing. He said, don't you forget me. He said, sometimes it's, you may not get what you want. But you always get what I want. Amen. He said, you read this to them. What he's, what she, look what that lady told us in verse 6. The Lord kill and make alive. You need to know that. Yes. Stop being all scared. The Lord kill and make alive. If you don't hear the truth of God, we won't fear him. We'll just keep on flailing. But if you hear the truth, he kills, he makes alive. He bring down to the grave, he bring up. He make the poor, he make the rich. 
Who make the rich? He bring low. He lift up. He raise up the poor out of the dust. He lift up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among the princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the works, the world, upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. Come on now. Now he's talking to you. He's going to keep the what? And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall the thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. Children, you're not grateful enough. You got to start praising God. And the more you magnify him, the more you'll see things as impossible. Because what I'm telling you right now, God is getting ready to give give you opportunities to buy land, to own things, pay off things. Shake the person next to you, because if I was the devil, I want them sleeping. Some of y'all didn't shake the person next to you. (laughs) You know what's interesting? You really can call this Hannah's song after God did something for her. Check out Mary's song. Luke 146. Listen to this. And Mary said, my soul do magnify the Lord. My soul do magnify the Lord. And if you'll teach your soul, your mind, will, and emotions to focus on God. Because the more you magnify him, I magnify him in my praise when I was getting ready to face Randy Moss 6, 4, 225. I magnify the Lord in my worship. How many of y'all know once my 510, 190 self was facing him? My God was bigger than him. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Some of you all got to step out in businesses. Some of you all have stepped out in business. Don't you allow doubt to kick in. Don't you allow doubt to kick in. Verse 46. And Mary said, my soul do magnify the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. Go back to verse 46. Y'all know the soul? Next. My spirit. And your spirit you want to rejoice in the real you. And your soul you want to magnify. You want to shout and think about God because your emotions are involved. Your mind is involved. And your will is involved. And the more you magnify him, the more he begins to shift your will to do what he says. Next verse, please. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And let me make sure I tell every person sitting here. You didn't come from your mother. You came through your mother. Don't ever forget that. You came from heaven. But you had to go through a mother to get on this earth. And your mother is not your lid. In other words, your lineage don't determine how high you go. You do. So always remember that because sometimes people allow whatever happened negative in their family, they allow that to be a lid. Don't do that. That's not your lid. God has a limitless life for you. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. How many of y'all know this lady is praising and worshiping God? Okay, you got your answered prayer now. What you going to do? Where's your song for the Lord? We should be singing new songs around here. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed the strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats. Woo-hoo! Y'all remember my seat story last week? 
He put a Nikki from Holly Grove in that seat on Southwest Airlines and exalted them of low degree. Uh Uh-oh. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has hoping his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Who's Abraham's seed? Get that doubt out of here. Ushers, open the back doors. Open the doors. Security, you don't have to be an usher. You can open the door too. Anybody near the door, open the doors. That doubt is out. Doubt means to be of two minds. I need everybody in here to shout. Doubt, Doubt. get out of here. here. Say it again. Doubt, Doubt. get out of here. here. It just means to be of two minds. Praise him. When it's looking like you have no idea how this is going to happen. There's some things he's telling me to do. I'm so uncomfortable. But I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him, Chuck. Everybody say doubt. Get out, of here. Get out of here. Everybody in here, you're going to dominate. Everybody in here, you're going to dominate. Everybody in this 11 o'clock service, you're going to dominate. You look me in my eyes, you're going to dominate. You're not going to always feel good. Everybody is not going to always be patting you on the back. But if you just don't give up and you can continue to give God the glory, he'll do things that we can't do. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Father, we thank you. You've given us good news today and we receive it. We receive it. Every age in here, every generation in here, we receive it. Sarah taught us, is there anything too hard? Hannah taught us, petition prayer, go to you. Mary taught us, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers.